All right, YouTube, so before I start the video, I want to start off with the obvious that there will never, ever, forever, ever, forever, ever be another Stephen Curry in the history of the league. The guy's a top five point guard of all time. You got Magic Johnson, you got Isaiah Thomas, you got Curry himself, Oscar Robertson, John Stockton's in the mix. You got John Havlicek, Bob Cousy, you got Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, Chris Paul. They're all in the discussion and right there with them is Stephen Curry. Three championships, two MVPs. Last year, a lot of people were kind of questioning, okay, what is the value of Stephen Curry to this team when you have a guy like Kevin Durant? And Kevin Durant, salute to him, he absolutely took over the 2017 finals. But this year, it seemed like Steph was really on a revenge mission ever since he came back from that ankle injury late in the season, headed into the playoffs. He had to prove his worth, and he was an absolute killer. Stephen Curry, one of the greatest players of all time, probably top 15, definitely a top five point guard now. He's in the discussion and all that, so respect to him. There will never be another Steph Curry. That being said, that performance actually kind of risen the Trey Young to the Atlanta Hawks rumors in the top five. The Hawks have the number three pick. There was some talk that the Hawks could potentially trade down to get Trey Young, but you also have teams like uh, Phoenix. I heard Phoenix might trade up into the top 10 to get a Trey Young, or it was one of those teams that wanted to trade up into the top 10 again to get Trey Young. And then you have Orlando at number six, who has forever been linked with Trey Young since the lottery even finished. And then you have uh, Chicago. I heard they were in talks to get Trey Young, excuse me. And then number eight, I think you had uh, the Knicks and Trey Young have always been linked because of that whole Steph Curry fiasco nine years ago. But you have to look at it like this. If you don't know, for those who don't know, for non-Hawks fans, the general manager of the Hawks is Travis Schlink. He came from Golden State where he was assistant GM and he pretty much got the job in large part, I would assume, because he was on that staff that brought in the Stephen Currys and the Clay Thompson and the Draymond Greens to bring the current dynasty we have here today that just won the third championship. So when you have a guy like Schlenk, and, and he's he was there when he heard some of the knocks on Stephen Curry coming out of college where Stephen Curry was obviously the most exciting player, the player of the year or whatever in college at Davidson, but he had these knocks of his size he had these knocks of, okay, but to compete defensively or to compete on the offensive end in the NBA, you know, he's going to be facing the same defenses and, and all the complex stuff that he saw at the end of college once his name was out there and he had that exposure and Stephen Curry was a star. He's going to have to deal with all of that, plus the banging and the physicality of the NBA. How long is that going to take him to adjust? He's got to work on his shot selection. These are all the same things that we're hearing about Trey Young today. So when I hear that and I see that Trey Young has already bulked up a couple of pounds since the lottery or since his last game at Oklahoma, that makes me kind of, okay, all right, we have something here. Now, at the end of the season, Trey Young looked absolutely terrible. And let me also say that I think that Colin Sexton's a better point guard than Trey Young because Colin Sexton just has that killer instinct to win regardless of what. Trey Young is flashy and he wants to win. Of course, everybody wants to win, but he also wants to score and he wants to embarrass the other opponent. I don't know. I think that's the difference between Colin Sexton and Trey Young is that, you know, Colin is really young bull. He's just looking to win. Young Bull doesn't care about how many points he ends up with. He doesn't care about how many assists he ends up with. He just wants to win and keep his team moving. And I think that's why we saw Alabama win that game in the tournament and then win in the SEC tournament. Did they win in the tournament? I don't even think Alabama. Al Alabama might have lost, but uh, but that, that's why we saw Alabama at least get into the tournament in the first place when they really had no business being there because he pushed them so much in the SEC tournament. The full 92 feet, y'all saw the clip a billion times on Twitter. That clip says everything you need to know about Colin Sexton and his will and his determination, his passion, his unparalleled motor for the game. 
and passion for the game. So I, I think Colin Sexton's a, be a better point guard than Trey Young. That being said, he's not on the Hawks' radar. Trey Young is. It's something that the Hawks have pretty much kind of put out there ever since the lottery. They said if they fell out the top three of the lottery, that they were probably going to look at Trey Young. They're going to take a serious look at him. They came to his workout. Uh, they came they came to his workout they looked at his workout they've done the scouting report on him with the AJC and all that good stuff and he's one of the four teams that Trey Young is only working out with if I worded that right you you don't understand what I was trying to say but the Hawks are really interested in Trey Young the rumors are picking up doesn't mean they're gonna pick him at number three it doesn't mean they're gonna trade down and he'll still be available when they trade down but they're they're very interested in Trey Young. So with that being said, I, I tried to look at this, you know, as a a previous guy who was who was against Trey Young. I, I didn't I thought he was a high risk, you know, high risk, high reward, of course. You know, you could get that that next flashy scorer, speedy guy who can also pass the ball very well, let the na nation and points and assists. Y'all have heard that stat a billion times about this guy as a freshman. Um, pretty much carried Oklahoma by himself on his back and everything like that as a freshman, as an 18, 19 year old. You've heard it a billion times. He can be that guy, but he can also be a guy who he takes horrible shots. He's going to be a nutcase to the fans wherever he goes because he's going to take ill-advised shots. When he gets to the rim, when he gets to the lane, he's not going to be able to get a lot of those same floaters, those one-footed, two-footed, whatever footed floaters that he got off in college over those guys because the guys in the NBA are so much bigger and physical and athletic than the guys that he was facing in the Big 12 and in Division One basketball last year. So, I mean, you know, you, you know, you saw the concerns for him while he was in college last year. So, I was one of those guys that was very concerned for him. But, looking at this, I'm seeing the high reward, looking at, you know what I'm saying? I. Steph and looking at Steve Nash, one of the guys he's, he's looking up to, and the fact that you know he will be playing with some better players than he did at Oklahoma, but he's also going to be facing better players than he faced at Oklahoma, so it's a two way street there. Um, you know, Trey Young has the potential, obviously, he has the potential, but I think you know, Hawks are really looking for that start to be honest, and um. I think Jaron Jackson is going to be a solid player wherever he goes. I think it could be very similar to the way that, you know, Al Horford has panned out where he was a guy that had a nice all around game, could rebound the ball, bring the ball up and pull up uh, from mid range. And then, you know, eventually once the game started to change, he reached out his shot from mid range to three point range. That's a guy like Jaron Jackson and something he can already do. Jaron Jackson is going to be a great pro. He's going to be a very decent, solid, good player in this league for years to come. And he's going to be that way for 10, 12 years. He's a safe pick. Marvin Bagley is another guy who, you know, showed concerns about his defense, but coming into a situation like Atlanta with the new coach, Lloyd Pierce, a guy who's all about defense, who's pretty much Philly's defensive coordinator over the last couple of years. And a guy that uh, that players love because he's young and relatable and stuff like that. Um, you know, Bagley is a guy that he had a lot of raw talent and it seemed like he got away with a lot because of he was just more athletic than the guys in college. That's not necessarily the case in the NBA. A lot of guys, a lot more guys are going to be just as athletic, if not more athletic than Marvin Bagley. But Bagley's another guy who has that superstar, like he could be a superstar. Mo Bamba, a guy whose stock has been rising after all of these workout videos have come out and uh, all these teams have seen him in workouts and seen his numbers that he can run the floor faster than John Wall and Russell Westbrook and point three six, whatever the, the stats were. He's another guy who, um, you know, his defense is already there. The question was his offense and his jump shot. Would he be able to get that off in the, in the league and will he be able to shoot it efficiently and effectively? Um, so, I mean, I don't know. After Hoodie Mello, I can't trust workout videos. After seeing Dwight Howard post plenty of shots of him making mid-range jumpers and free throws 
in the off season and posting them every single day for a summer and then kind of see that dissolve a little bit um, when the regular season came back around. I don't know how much stock you put into workout videos or just workouts, period. But yeah, I mean, uh, that, that those are a couple guys. MPJ is another guy in, in the mix. And of course, MPJ has that back you have to worry about. Yes, I feel better than ever. Of course, you're gonna say that when millions of dollars are on the line, okay? Of course, you're gonna say that when, when you wanna go number three instead of number seven and you wanna get more money because I don't know. I, I, I don't know how the logistics work in the NBA if it's, if it's like the NFL or not, but if the top three picks are gonna get more money than a top 10 pick or a lottery pick in general. Um, but even if your back feels better than it ever has, Towards the end of that year, I saw it with my own eyes in Nashville against Florida State in the first round. I didn't really like what I saw from, from MPJ. And MPJ is really gonna have to prove me wrong because of course he's got a natural talent. He's got the size, size something you can't teach. He can score the ball at will when he was healthy. Um, we don't know how post injury Porter is gonna look and we don't know if even if he looks like the guy he looked like in high school towards the end there we don't even know how long he's going to be able to sustain that before the next injury and the next injury and the next injury so when you see things like that these these things always just concern you you know blake griffin okay you know he suffered the injury coming into the league he came back had a couple of great seasons but every now and then he's still been battling with injuries who's another guy we look at Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid out for the first year, first couple years coming into the league getting hurt. And he comes back and he's great. Top five big man in the league. One of the better players in the league, period. But he's still uh, tinkered with his minutes and this and that. I don't know if I want that off rip. If I know I'm getting a guy that's coming off of an injury. Those are always so tricky, or, or a major injury, I should say. Those things are always so tricky to kind of guess. So MPJ, he's another guy with superstar uh, uh, ability. So you have MPJ, you have Marvin Bagley, Mo Bamba, and Trey Young. Those are the guys that could be the superstars uh, for the guys that are on the Hawks radar right now. And then you have Jaron Jackson, who you know is going to be a solid player. He's going to be a good player, great player in the league. Probably he's going to be an all-star for a few years, just keeping it a buck. He's a DN3 guy, very physical, um, can play defense. Any guy that can play phys uh, defense coming into the league, he gets automatic points because so many guys like a Trey Young or a Colin Sexton, they, they get knocked for uh, their, their defense and the defensive efforts, and the guys are just known for like taking too many um Risk on defense, always going for the steals, always going for the blocks, the flashy stuff, uh, so they can get back on offense and do what they do and make the YouTube highlights and blase blase. So that's my take on it. Um, I think Trey Young, at the end of the day, Trey Young, high risk, high reward. Do you want the safe pick at the end of the day? Or do you want to take a chance on the superstar? If I'm the Hawks, I have nothing to lose. Because if Trey Young doesn't pan out, then I'm just in the lottery again next year. And next year and the year after that. The Hawks haven't traded any of their future picks yet. All they have is more picks coming into them. Like Cleveland. I mean, they, I mean, well, the Hawks have Cleveland's pick uh, next year if Cleveland doesn't land in the top 10. And you know how that's going to go with, you know, LeBron probably leaving and stuff so i mean hey at the end of the day is a very difficult decision i haven't even brought up luka donjic uh luka donic excuse me in this video but um it's a very difficult decision to make that's why you know gms have the jobs they have and why we just watch ex spectators but i'm thinking if you're the hawks you got to pull the trigger on on one of the four guys high risk high reward um, except for Mo Bamba, I think Mo Bamba, at the very least, is going to be a good defender. So you, you don't really lose with him. But I mean, if you want the flashy guy to to sell out the seats and bring people to Atlanta, the Highlight Factory, the new renovated Phillips Arena downtown, 
Trey Young or Marvin Bagley is your guy. And if you really want to go the new flashy three-point Stephen Curry type thing, Trey Young's not Stephen Curry. Trey Young is the first Trey Young. He's not Steve Nash. Trey Young is the first Trey Young. I'm going Trey Young. People have talked me into it. I didn't believe it at first. I still think Colin Sexton's a better point guard, but for who's on the Hawks radar, we have to look at who's on their radar. Colin Sexton isn't on their radar due to all the reports and stuff I've seen. It'll be nice to have the hometown kid back at home, but that's not happening. It is looking like it, at least. Pull the trigger on Trey Young. That's it. If you made it all the way to the end of this video to hear me babble, thank you. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Or night. Or whatever. Take care. Take care of yourself. I think that's better. Take care of yourself. Alright, bye.